Hey guys, I'm Jerry Mitchell, and I want to share with you 43 years of range experience of matching the correct ammo to the correct target. So I've been in a lot of matches. I've seen a lot of poorly designed stages and target systems that people can get hurt on. So, but what I'd like for you to do is take a moment and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It means a lot to us, and we can the more subscription, of course, the more videos we can do. So on with the show. All right, guys, 43 years of experience. Give you an idea. Ammunition target design. This right here is a 500 Bunnell rifle target. And I've seen people shoot pistol at close range with them, but what you see and what you want to look for on a target design, instantly you got a right angle right here. Anytime you see a right angle on a target and you shoot pistol ammunition on it, it's a no-no. And the reason for that is when you shoot a projectile on steel, it's going to have a 360 dispersion. And guess where it goes? It goes right on this ledge. And then guess where it goes after that? goes right toward you. So you never want to have a pistol target with a ledge on it. This is a pistol target that's designed correctly. And when you shoot it, it'll have the dispersion, but it won't spray back toward the shooter. So what you want to be aware of when you set a target like this up correctly, you don't want to have it set back on the edge because then you have that edge again to shoot back toward the shooter. So the correct way to, to present a pistol target to the shooter correctly is always have the face in front of the ledge so you never have a 90 where it'll shoot back toward you. So this is to be shot with a rifle at over 100 yards, and it will, it's a good application for that. And something you never want to ever do is shoot mild steel with a high-powered rifle. And here's a really prime example of it. Here's one that's been shot continuously at about 200 yards, and you can see the pock marks in it. And what you see in a pock mark, and one thing you want to realize, if you ever see a pistol target with a pock mark in it like this, you never want to shoot it with a pistol around it at any distance. What happens is that energy of that bullet goes into that hole and it's going to come right back at you. A big part of that bullet is going to come back toward the shooter. And that's a, that's a no-no. You never want to, and you can see the backside has some pock marks in it also. Uh, anytime you see a pock mark on a target, it's, it's, uh, it's an unsafe condition. So you don't want to ever shoot it. If you see it in a match, you should suggest that they change it out. Always flat face target, no pock marks, no right angles, and also the ground underneath the target is very important. If I'm shooting a pistol round and the target is relatively close to the ground and there's a steel stand or there's a lot of heavy rocks or something there that can deflect that bullet again or the piece of the bullet, it might come back toward the shooter. So that's something you always want to be aware of is what is next to that target. Another bad scenario, say I have the right pistol target, and here I have another piece of steel on a right angle. The frag come off of the face of this target, hits this target, and it's got another right angle right back toward the shooter. So when you do your target setup, you always want to make sure that that 360 spray is going to go away from the shooter and not contact anything that can direct any part of that projectile back to the user. So a little bit of safety input there. Okay, bullet design is going to be very important when you shoot steel. A lead bullet like this, this is a coated lead bullet. Uh, the spray is going to be another 360 degree spray, but lead itself is very soft and when it hits another object It wants to deform and loses velocity very quickly Relatively safe to shoot it by just about any safe distance past 10 yards Another uh, jacket design of course is a brass jacketed bullet uh, It's a great design. It works great for what it's intended to on steel You have to remember that brass jacket is a little bit stiffer than lead so anytime you got any right angles, then you might get a piece of a jacket back. So something to think about. The next jacketed bullet is a regular gilding metal. It's a copper and zinc alloy. It's a little bit softer. It's a little bit more ductile. So when it hits another object, it wants to lose velocity re relatively quick. Uh, and then, of course, the fourth one would be a bimetal jacket. This is a uh, European manufacturer. It's a surplus round. Sticks to a magnet. It's usually a mild steel jacket with some kind of a coating on it, a copper or copper washed or brass washed finished, so it doesn't corrode. Definitely not something you want to shoot on steel within 100 yards. Uh, and a lot of places out west, uh, where you have rifle ammunition with that same kind of a jacket, it's totally outlawed because when you shoot steel, uh, the high velocity in the steel jacket actually makes a very bright, uh, very high temperature uh, frag and it can set the brush on fire. A lot of fires have been started with steel jacketed ammo on steel targets. So some ranges ban it completely. So something to think about. Also, the, the steel jacket is very stiff, so it wants to stay in its original shape. And uh, it has a tendency to bounce around a little bit more than, you, than you'd like for it to, to do. 
And of course, the other projectile would be a steel core ammunition like this SS-109. It has a small steel tip in it, something you don't want to ever shoot steel with. And of course, a lot of the surplus rifle ammunition, uh, 50 BMG, most ball rounds have a big steel core in them like this. And you have to realize uh, steel does not uh, necessarily flatten out r relatively quick. So it has a tendency to bounce around. You want to definitely stay off of steel with this. Uh, AP rounds are even worse because the core is going to be even harder. Uh, so you want to do, uh, you want to use the right ammunition for the application. Steel targets up close. Most military law enforcement use a fringe, a frangible projectile. It's a reduced ricochet or reduced hazard ammunition. Here's a 9mm round. It's usually made out of a compressed copper or tin alloy compressed into a bullet. But what's really unique about it, when you hit steel, it breaks into a lot smaller pieces. So the tendency of those smaller pieces to bounce around with a lot less energy. So give you an idea, if you cut it, it, it breaks like glass. Uh, so that's what it does when it hits steel target. It breaks just like glass into a thousand small pieces where a regular bullet, like a lead bullet like this, when it hits, it has a tendency to stay into a lot bigger pieces which can bounce around. So reduced hazard ammunition, still reduced hazard. Anything up close can be hazardous. So choose your ammunition, choose your targets right. And let's go out on the range and shoot a couple of steel targets with some frange ammo. All right, we're out on the range. We're 10 yards away. Got some standard 115 ball FMJ. I'm gonna shoot that target on the right twice. I've got a little bit of a cardboard scatter shield on it. I hope it stays there for two rounds. What we're looking for is what kind of frag pattern we have on that cardboard and also the one on the ground. Give you an idea of what goes on when you actually shoot a steel target. So, all right guys, two shots, target on the right, 115 ball. Here we go. Got him. Let's do one more. Got him again, so we're clear. Now, want to take a look? Let's go take a look. Okay, as you can see, there's a piece of lead on the inside. As you can see on the bottom here, we had picked up a couple of little pieces of frag. It had enough energy to go through the cardboard and that was about four or five feet away. But you can see the pattern around the cardboard. And that's what you get when you shoot steel. You get a 360 degree spray. So that's what you want to always remember. 360 degrees, guys. So that bullet's gonna go every which way. And if it finds something to bounce off of and it's angled back toward you, it's gonna give you a little bit of love. So let's go back and shoot frange ammo on the target on the left. Okay, we're back at 10 yards again. I've got some frangible ammunition. It's a 100 grain bullet. It's probably a little bit faster than that 115 ball. But the idea behind these bullets is that when they hit steel, they shatter into a lot smaller pieces. And it's a lot lighter weight projectile leaving the face of the target. So let's go ahead and shoot that target on the left. Oh, and my shield fell. Let me go set it back up. All right, we're back at 10 yards again. I got one more round of frange. Let's go ahead and pop him, see what it looks like. And we're clear. Let's go down and take a look. So what you see is the frange pattern is a lot finer. So that means the pieces that the bullet comes into is almost like dust. So what you're looking for right there is the smaller, the smaller particle of bullet carries a lot less energy and it doesn't have the tendency to carry energy back toward you. It's a reduced hazard ammunition. And if you look on the bottom here, nothing had enough energy to penetrate the cardboard on the bottom. So a lot smaller pieces, the bullet goes into thousands of little pieces. Energy is dispersed a lot quicker, a lot less potential of a bounce back off the ground or a target stand or a target next to it. So you always want to match the projectile to the application. Always want to be safe. Okay guys, we're back in the shop here. We have the uh, frag patterns. This is 115 ball out of a nine millimeter. You see how big the pieces can be and that's where the hazard comes in that these pieces want to continue on and, and go places and if you have a right angle they'll come back toward you so and a reduced hazard ammunition as a frangible projectile you see that the pattern 
it's totally different a lot smaller pieces it's almost totally uniform shatters like glass a lot less energy a uh, lot less possibility of bounce back it's a lot safer to shoot on steel in close quarters so always match your ammunition to the target requirements and always shoot the correct target for the application and you'll have a good day on the range